All right, so in the previous video, we went over the for loop. And we're going to do the same thing in this video with the while loop. And I'm going to show you that you can pretty much do the same thing that you did in the for loop with a while loop. So the first thing that we did was we basically iterated over something 10 times. So the first thing I need is something to store a counter. So we'll just call that C and set that equal to zero. And then we'll go down here and type in while C is less than 10. And then of course we finish that up with a colon. Gives us an indent, at least in spider it does. We're going to print out the current value of C. So this will work, but each time through the loop, if we don't do something with C, it's going to continue to hold that zero value. So it'll just keep printing zero over and over again. And that's called an infinite loop. So it'll just keep doing it because there's nothing to stop it. So we have to increment C each time through the loop. And the way we do that is C plus equals 1. All right, and that's the same as saying C equals C plus 1. Now, if I run this, we should get 0 through 9 because we said as long as it's less than 10. And, of course, we start counting at 0. So let's run it. And as you can see, we get 0 through 9. All right, just like we did with the for loop. So the other thing that we did was we changed this to 5. And now it should only print 0 through 4. And if we run it, of course, we get 0 through 4. All right, so that's a pretty simple thing. Uh, the other thing that we did in there was we created an array. And I believe we called it fruit and we put five fruits in there so let me go ahead and set that up all right so there's my array with five pieces of fruit in there and of course we still have our counter which we have to update in here and while c is less than five which we can do because there's only five in there but like i said before that's not the best way to do it then we're going to print out fruit and then whatever the current value of C is. And we start at zero. Apple is in the zeroth index for fruit. Banana is at number one, two, three, and four. So let me go ahead and put that in there. And this should print them all out. And as you can see, it does. But if I add something in here, and I think we did a kiwi last time, by doing it like this, we lose the last one. So now it'll print out through kiwi. All right, but we don't get strawberry because we didn't say the length of fruit. All right, so we want to do this while C is less than the length of fruit. All right, and this way, no matter how many things we add in there, it's going to continue to add or delete from the length of fruit. So now if I print it out, of course we get them all. And if I add a couple more, all right, so in this case, I've added cantaloupe and watermelon here. All right, so I've added two more. Now if I run this, of course it dynamically changes. If I get rid of a couple things, we'll get rid of the blueberry and the kiwi. And then rerun it. 
and of course it changes to whatever our length is. Alright, so one of the other things that we did was uh, we got text and we set that equal to an input. Alright, we prompt the user for some text. We still need this counter, alright, so that we can break out of this loop at some point. But this time, while C is less than the length of the text, we're going to print text C. All right, and then increase C by one on each loop. All right, so no matter how long the text is, I think we used my name, but let me go ahead and run this. And I'll type in my name. And just like in the for loop, this is going to print one on top of the other when we do it this way. All right, so if I want to have it print David like that, I mean, there's a couple ways of doing it. One is to create another variable that's just an empty string. And then we set that variable t plus equals all right it's how we append and then copy this with control c and then control v to paste it up here pull print out of here control x to pull it out move it down here and once again you don't want it to be indented because then it falls under that while loop so you want to unindent it and here we just want to print out T. Now if I rerun this type in my name and hit enter we get David because it just keeps appending the next letter to this string but when we use the print function it automatically puts a carriage return at the end and there is a way to fix that which I'll show you in some later videos so now keeping this in mind with the for or the while loop we can loop through any string so if I pull a long string off the internet All right, so if I rerun this, put in the text that I just copied, control V, it's one of them lorem ipsum generators, and then hit enter. As you can see, it put the thing down here but of course we didn't have a uh, any spacing so let me put some spacing in there all right so I just put a carriage return in there so let me go ahead and rerun this put my text in now run it and as you can see we got a space in there now so this is what I put in there and this is what it generated. Now, the cool thing about this is you can loop over all those characters, which we're doing here. So you can add conditions in there. Like if you wanted to find out how many words, we'll just assume that wherever there's a space separator, that's a word. So if I wanted to count how many words are in here, in my while loop, I would add an if condition and I would say if text C all right which is the current character that I'm on is equal to and then a space all right so you could do it like that or you could do it with double quotes and end that with a colon, I'm going to count. 
So let me add another counter in here for words. So we'll just call this W equals zero. And I'm going to update W by one the same way that I did the C here on my counter. And down here, I'm going to print not only the characters back to me, I'm going to print how many characters and how many words. All right, so I'm going to print a line feed. All right, so after this, it's going to line feed, then it's going to print out the characters. All right, or the character count, because remember, while we're in the while loop, it's updating the character count, and then a slash, and then the word count, which we're doing if we get to a space. Now, one of the things that we have to look at is, of course, we're going to have a word here, and we don't have a space, so we're going to have to add one to the word count but then if we get to a space we update it by one two all right so we got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two all right, so I've got a total count of 84 here, and that's without this one. So there should be 85 words, if I'm not mistaken. So if we run this, and of course, I think I'm going to get an error down here because I think I have to change these to strings. So let's go ahead and try and run it. I put in my text here. So let me go ahead and grab this. Control C, Control V to paste it, and sure enough, we got to put it, make these strings. All right, and that's all there is to making it a string. You just str and then put it in parentheses. All right, so now if I rerun this, pop it in, hit enter, and we get a count of 84. That's because I didn't add one to it over here. All right, and 549 characters total. So to get the correct count, I just add one to this. Rerun it. Pop it in, and now I should get 549 and 85. And that's all there is to counting words characters if you wanted to do sentences then you would add a condition statement basically saying that if you run into a period or an exclamation point or a question mark that would indicate the end of a sentence and you would count those all right and once again like I say if you wanted to count the uh, sentences we'll just I see that these all have periods so I'll just throw a an if condition in here real quick so we'll copy this one control C and control V of course I'm gonna say EL IF alright C equals period and of course we don't want to update the word we want to update and I'm just gonna put an S here and we'll add another counter up here just like that and we will print it out down here so once again if it's a period we're gonna update s by incrementing it by one here we don't have to add one because of course once we get to a period here that's one sentence and then two three four five six seven eight nine so we should have ten sentences 
So these won't change, so it should just have forward slash and 10. So if I rerun this, let me go ahead and copy this text. Hit paste, and as you can see, we counted the sentences. All right, so that's just a few things that you can do with the while loop. And once again, if you can do it with the while loop, you can do it with the for loop. Um, and the next video should be pretty brief. We're going to cover what is known as the do while loop. So we're going to do something at least once before we get into the while loop. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.